Hey guys, today I'm going to make a list of my top 10 for season 1 of The Timepiece Gentleman and Anthony Farrar. These are my top 10 characters that we saw in Dallas. So I split the seasons into Dallas and Los Angeles. Now, honorable mentions uh, would go to Jimmy Sutton, this random guy that we never saw again. There certainly were characters that were very interesting, uh, even clients, and we never saw them again after one episode. And it did look like it was a lot of fun, but this is my top 10. Let me know what your top 10 is in the comments below. Remember, only season one, which is in Dallas. So that's how I viewed this uh, TV series as season one, Dallas, season two, they moved to Los Angeles, some of them, and the rest of them remain behind. As you can see, we, <laughs> we have a lot of uh, characters, starting with Jimmy. So Jimmy is not a top 10 character, at least in season one. He doesn't have much character development until he starts going to Los Angeles. They start looking at the penthouse. He becomes a right-hand man. He's given a Rolex Hulk, I believe, for free. Uh, Jimmy is pretty quiet. He was always part of the timepiece gentleman business, but he always stayed in the background. He's always kind of a background character, at least in season one. We didn't really know all that much about him. So I have him as an honorary mention. So he's not on my top 10, but if it was a top 11, I definitely would put him in. You can see he is on the other side of the table, right? You have all the employees, even Marco, the 50-50 partner, on one side, on sitting, and then you have Anthony and Jimmy. Jimmy would play a much more critical role, and again, we will reassess the top 10. We, will, we are going to do another one for Los Angeles, okay? So don't worry if certain characters will make reappearances and they will get different ratings, of course. Number 10, we start with Alfred. Alfred, at this point in time, was a young guy. He lived in Connecticut. He drove all the way from Connecticut to Dallas. No job offer. I believe he contacted Anthony on Instagram. And he just moved here out of the blue and started a job. Very risque, and it worked out. It panned out well for him. He had an interest in watches, and in terms of how knowledgeable he is about it, he's probably one of the more knowledgeable employees, to be quite honest with you, and when it comes to watch prices, how the watch market is. Now, he did get into some shady stuff, like the NFTs that he would show off, which he believed at one time would make him wealthy. Uh, he, had, he certainly had a lot of NFTs in crypto, right? But then again, you know, he also sold purses and uh, spider monkeys and we can go down that train. And actually he was vilified, vilified as even worse than Anthony at one point by Reddit. So he, I have him as number 10 because he's such an interesting character. Number 9, Tyler. Tyler, remember, is the lawyer I don't know if she is a Playboy bunny or she was cosplaying one at one time, but she is Anthony's good friend. And she was the trademark attorney on record for Anthony when Anthony was trademarking everything from timepiece sports, sports motorsports to anything he could get his hands on. I think one of the most weird trademarks I've ever seen is changing the way the West Coast shops was... Uh, at least they attempted to trademark that. Tyler was also suspected to be the person behind the camera of the great Watts Nicholas fail videos. The apology to Watts Nicholas video and the live stream blaming everything on Watts Nicholas. And then mysteriously, you, you heard somebody's voice. It sounded like Tyler. And then the live stream cut. And then there was an apology video later. So I have her as number nine. Didn't play that big of a role, but overall, pretty interesting character in the Timepiece Gentleman Season 1. Next, number eight, Vic. Uh, I like Vic. I, I know some people don't like Vic. I like Vic. Uh, he was the only reasonable one in the blackout. There is video footage of him asking Anthony the direct question we all should have asked Anthony at the time. Why are we doing this? <laughs> you know, what is the point? 
of blacking out? Like, what is the point of just, you know, social media blackout? And Anthony said, well, you know, my lawyer said it was a good idea. And then they called their lawyer and he was like, yeah, this is a good idea. Keep going. Uh, yeah, the, probably one of the harder workers, definitely an individual who has a understanding of the watch market, uh, is has made mistakes, probably not as knowledgeable as Alfred, but overall a very good salesperson. And, and like I said, sometimes it, it's most interesting when you have a crazy environment and you put some logical people in it. Vic is definitely a logical human being. He asked the question we all wanted to know, or we all want to ask, why did we do the blackout? Like, the blackout was the beginning of the end. Next, we have Liz. Uh, Liz would play a bigger role. Do not worry. Again, these are season one rankings. Season one rankings. Liz would play a much bigger role as the series would continue on. And her and Darby would both go to Los Angeles. But right now, I have her ranked here. I think it is a fair spot to have her ranked. She went everything from a, uh, just a random person to a secretary to a from a bartender to a random employee to a secretary to head of shipping to a saleswoman back to head of shipping. You know, Liz was probably not as aggressive at this time. Uh, I liked her personality more. Uh, it does seem like she was very loyal, like a good loyal friend. Uh, now, in my opinion, they were overcompensated, and when you overcompensate somebody, it's like the mouse. If you know, if you give a cookie a mouse, they're gonna ask for a glass of milk, and then suddenly they're asking for a five to ten thousand dollar Malibu a month rental. Yeah, which gets me into Darby. I could tie these two together. We could separate them, but they're pretty much the same person, in my opinion. Season one, Darby fantastic job videography just incredible videographer at that time definitely somebody who was crushing it and doing very well you could tell that he was working incredibly hard this would all change when they moved to los angeles and they started living the la lifestyle and he started driving his corvette with lambo doors thing and i believe he started work he was working far less hard than he was in Dallas. But in Dallas, him and Liz were a good combination. They were compensated fairly. They were treated okay. And they did a lot of work. Darby did a lot of work to make the channel what it was. Now, the first incident where you knew Darby was going to um, become what he is today, a sellout, was when they went to the luggage store and they were celebrating their big, big, you know, 100,000 subscriber. And Darby said, what about me? And, they, and he wanted a $900 backpack. So go back and watch that clip. You will understand exact, the exact moment Darby changed into what he is today. A money grubber. Somebody who's money hungry. Now, uh, Marco. Marco, why do I have Marco rated so low? I'm not going to spoil this for you, but I actually have three characters above Anthony. So Marco is in the top five. He is a co-owner. His lack of personality is a severe understatement. Uh, they even towards the middle of the series, they would customers would still call in and are you the second guy. They didn't even know his name, right? They got a hundred thousand. Nobody know his name. Now, <laughs> what is interesting? Maybe we do a grand caliber one. What is interesting is. Um, Marco is now, quote, the face of Grand Caliber uh, with Jimmy. I mean, it's you can't make this stuff up. But anyway, he is a main character, the sidekick of Anthony, the second guy, if you will, that many people call. Very knowledgeable, watches, very hard worker. Uh, and now we get into our top four. You might say, how can you have Anthony so low? Well... One thing I know is he watches all my videos, and I know this would piss him off. So that's why I have him ranked four. But on a serious note, I mean, yes, the um, the whole show revolved around Anthony, but it doesn't necessarily mean just because he's hogging the show that he's my favorite character. I actually have three characters that I enjoyed more than Anthony. And you might say, oh, well, you're just being petty, and maybe I am, but... Uh, Anthony was a large doses of the show, and he actually did, did 
tried to take away from the, my top two characters their screen time, I felt like my top two characters deserved far more screen time than Anthony gave them. And part of the reason Anthony got rid of these individuals was uh, due to them taking more fame and shine from him. So Anthony, I only have as number four. Uh, we will see him on the LA ranking very soon. And then last, and then now that we're top three. Okay, so just go with me. These are my three favorite characters. Dylan. We saw the whole story arc from Dylan. Some young kid out of high school getting married in Las Vegas, starting his own Watts dealership. I mean, in season one, in terms of character growth, from employee one, who wasn't even paid at the time, to getting married, to creating a competing business, which would then be in California against, you know, obviously, Anthony moved to California as well. Fascinating story arc. I mean, you got to give it to Dylan. He was uh, employee one. He took a gamble on this company. And he literally had his entire life documented from marriage. I mean, his marriage was documented to Vegas and to leaving and saying goodbye. And we don't really have that resolution in any other character. Many of these characters, they just disappear. And we have no idea what happened to them, uh, including my top two characters, which I really felt like they deserve more shine, but Anthony got jealous and had to push them away. Number two, Clove May. Uh, the reason that she left was she took too much attention away from Anthony, and Anthony did not like that. Now, it was very contentious. Um, there was a, you know, my favorite line in the whole series in season one is, Marco, you're like my gay husband. You just sit there and take pictures for, of me on Instagram. Marco obviously didn't like that. And the whole story about who hired her, Marco hired her, she didn't, I, I mean, honest to goodness, like, it was a quite a bit of drama that we needed. And uh, then we got, then they got rid of her. So it was very sad to see. It's one of those, uh, almost like a cameo appearance. And, you know, I wish that we had more um, Clove May. Uh, it was interesting to see her, like, do design work and, sell watches and she's going to be a woman brand of watches and then one day uh she left and it was a disaster which leads me to my number one of course you might guess there is a very important individual in season one that is completely missing from the list until now his name is mike rubin the rubinator what a interesting character and this is what i said like if you put a normal person in a in office, the office setting, right? A crazy setting where people are like going, ha, ha, they're going insane all the time. This is us. We are the Mike Rubens, right? Watching this crazy drama unfold every single week. Now, in season one, we didn't know Anthony had taken, because at that time he had not taken the $5 million in consignment or debt, whatever it is. And they were just doing business. Two dudes doing business, and once uh, Mike felt, uh oh, you know, he was pushed out after the charity work, then we never saw him again, and then he just left, and no one knew when he left, why he left. He was just gone. Uh, my favorite memories of the series was when Mike was double paying people. Definitely a pro move, right? I mean, definitely very good customer service, in my opinion. We're going to miss Mike Rubin. Uh, we're going to miss Clove. We're going to miss uh, Employee One. Uh, and all these individuals did not make it to Season 2, which was the Anthony show. Actually, the Season 2 was titled Anthony Farrar. Season 1 was titled The Timepiece Gentleman, featuring Anthony Farrar. But mostly Mike Rubin. Anyway, <laughs> let me know what your top 10 is in the comments below or who your favorite character was. Mine was definitely Mike Rubin. Uh, by, I mean, Mike Rubin, Clove, I think they were pretty close characters in my mindset. Anyway, bye guys.